Donna, let's say you had a good year last year, one of the few who had a good year last year, and you decided to buy a car. And you came in the Bob's car dealership and I go, oh, Donna, I've got the car for you. It's this one. You know why? It's got airbags. Do we have a deal? No. Of course we don't. Airbags are critical. You wouldn't buy a car without them. It's just that since roughly the mid-90s, every car has airbags. So although critical, it's not helping Donna make a decision. It's not creating what I call preference value. It's not causing me to prefer. Yeah, it's great you have it. I wouldn't buy a car without it. In fact, it's only important if it's not there. You're kidding me. This car doesn't have airbags? I can't buy that. My family's going to be in this car. Now. Why do I do the little shtick like that? Because I interviewed your clients. And what your clients are telling me is everybody's message is almost identical. You know, here we are at the finals. Why should I choose you is the key answer. And what clients are hearing are airbags. It's not that airbags aren't critical. Hey, you wouldn't have been invited. You certainly wouldn't have made the short list. It's just that from the short list in, they're not creating preference. Why? Because everybody sounds the same. Now, you may be thinking, yeah, but Bob, it's not true. Those guys aren't like that. They don't do it as well or whatever. It doesn't matter. This is from the client's perspective. They're going to decide who wins or loses. And if what they're hearing is pretty much the same thing, then how do they choose? And if the clients don't get that you're different and better, you're either going to lose or you're going to compete on fees. But here's the thing. This little challenge, the one where the client doesn't understand why you're different and better, not only makes this bake-off difficult, it actually is the source of all the pain of your professional career if you have to acquire and retain clients. Because when you think about it, if the client doesn't know you're different and better, isn't it a little harder to get those meetings? Who are you? How are you different? Get the client to listen to your pitch, uh, share their problems, explore your solutions, uh, agree and commit to you, as we've just seen, choose you in competition. But how about this? Pay you what you're worth and or recommend you to others or just be loyal to you and not be exposed to competition every time the next project comes up. This is the pain of our existence. <laughs> now, if we could reverse that, even just a little bit, think how much easier and more fun your career would be. If clients clearly got that you were different and better, life gets a heck of a lot easier. And that's the paradox, because what I discovered in studying the elite providers is that they're selling less than any of us. They're not selling. Why? Because their clients are selling for them. They have a surrogate sales force. How did this happen? You know, the clients are giving them all their follow-on business. They never expose them to competition. They're actively in referring them in the marketplace. So they're, you know, they're out there carrying the flag. And by their brand and reputation, everyone feels threatened not to use them. In an environment where a client has plenty of choice, plenty of very good choice, how do we decommoditize? How do we build preference in this overcrowded market? And the good news is that there are 10 reasons why a client chooses one provider over another. Only one of those is fees. So there's a lot of room to build preference. And so that's what we're targeting today.